Hello everyone, Jason here with VC Edge. Today I'm going to be working on adding some coolant filtration to the Tormach mill. It doesn't come with anything, it just runs the coolant through the pump. And I want to be able to filter out some of the carbon fiber dust and other particles that I'm going to be machining. So I've got a bunch of parts here from McMaster Car. Let's go ahead and get started on it. Uh, in this big box here, I just have some filter felt. This will be the first this will be the first stage of cooling. I'm going to have two stages. Uh, one with a, a 25 micron and then one with a, a 10 micron or maybe I might even go finer. Wow, this is just full of packing material. Okay, filter felt. This is going to go into the the uh, the drip pan or the whatever that part's called. I have to look it up. Next thing is all the components for the on the pressure side of the filter. So after the pump, it will go through another uh, bag filter. These guys here got some fittings. Whoa, things a lot bigger than I thought. Ah. There it is. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, wow. That should be um, completely adequate for this machine. It, it flows like, uh, uh, what is it, like 30 gallons per minute, and my pump can only put out like, I don't know, what is it, 10 or something like that? So this should be plenty, which is good. It'll have lots of extra capacity for the filtration. It won't get clogged up so easily. And then I've got some of this uh, push-to-connect tubing. I shouldn't need very much of it. It should be a pretty straightforward installation uh, with the fittings and everything that are already on there. On the back, you'll see that. It, uh, I just need to find a way to mount this and then I'll just route all the tubes to it. How hard could it be? First thing, I need to make sure all the fittings that I got are even gonna work. I've got to reduce this down. I couldn't even find an adapter for that size, but luckily it's got two. I think this is a one inch. MPT and then that needs to get adapted to a half inch push to connect. Uh, yeah, looks like that ought to do it. I uh, guess I might as well. God, this thing's huge. Might as well put the bag in. And wow, what is all this stuff? Got a, a gauge, pressure gauge. Um, not sure that there will be any pressure necessarily, but uh, I guess we'll see what the pump puts out. Okay, so it looks like the bag goes through here, like so, and that somehow gets clamped in place when you put the whole body together, and then this basket. I must go around like that. Is that it? It doesn't exactly center up in the middle there, but uh, I guess that's okay. It comes with a big wrench, so once I get this mounted, I'll tighten this up all the way. So let's go to the back of the machine and see where I'm going to put this. I'm going to have to make some kind of bracket to to lock into these holes here. Okay, so here we are at the back of the machine. I want this to sit somewhere about right here. Unfortunately, this doesn't come with a bracket of any kind. So I'll have to make one. And I think I've got some, uh, some steel I could use to make a little bracket that bends down and bolts into this piece of the enclosure. I could just make it straight across, but then it'd be really hard to drill and tap into this because there's not enough room up here. But I think that's a good spot for it. So just need to come up with a little design for a bracket and then uh, start cutting that up. Right, so here's my design. It's very simple. I'm just going to cut it out of this uh, 1 8 inch thick steel sheet.
All right, I got this thing all cut out. Uh, I just need to put the bend in it. Uh, I don't have a like a sheet metal bender that can do this thick of material. So I just used the mill to cut a slot into the material about halfway into the thickness. That'll allow me to bend it in that precise location really easily. I'll just have to weld it to bring the structural integrity back. Just a quick disclaimer, I am not a welder. I am just uh, barely learning how to do some TIG welding. So this will probably be really bad and I'm probably doing a lot of things wrong. So yeah. it is just what it is. It's not critical in any way. So might as well get some practice. So there's my crappy welding. I definitely need a lot more practice, but uh, that should be serviceable. I just need to put a hole here and here to mount it to the enclosure. So I got this thing all sandblasted. I'm just gonna paint it with some satin black just to keep it from rusting. The actual location of these holes isn't particularly important. I'm getting them close, but uh, there's some adjustability in the bracket, so it's not a big deal if they're not perfect. Found a couple bolts in the junk pile. Very common size. It's a M6 by 1.0. It's funny, a lot of people call these 10 millimeter bolts, but they're actually six millimeter. But it's just because the, the head uses a 10 millimeter wrench. Not much metal behind that, so I'm gonna have to be careful. I might end up putting a, a rib nut in here if it doesn't hold, but it's like it's pretty nice and sturdy. Should be all right. Okay, now we can mount this up. These actually, the threads in here are about the same size, so I just tapped them for uh, the M6 as well. If it comes down to it and this isn't strong enough to hold it, like if it's bending a lot while it's when it's full of water or coolant, I can uh, I can put another piece across the top and bolt it to the to the top here and that will support it even more if I need to. Not exactly sure why there's two ports here. There's one for a gauge, but I guess it's just to have it where you can put it on either side. Both of them are for the, the, the out flow. So the pressure will be reading on the side where the nozzle is. All right, I got these are all tightened down already. And let me get you further away. You can see all the, the, the tubing routing that we're gonna do. Now that that's mounted, I can put the tubing in. The Tormox cooling has a couple of options for lines. They come from the pump and into this splitter. I disconnect this one that goes up. It'll probably leak some coolant out, but that's all right. I wasn't able to find the exact same stuff that Tormox uses, but uh, I've got this nylon tubing that I got off of Amazon or something. So I'll just use that for the short little run. All right, not too bad. It's getting a little busy in here, but try to keep things managed to a somewhat reasonable level. This thing's kind of a pain to have to scrape out chips. This filter felt is a, a 25 micron. So for the first layer, it should allow it to still drain through without, without filling this up with coolant. Uh, we'll see how it works out. I'm not really sure what level of filtration I need for carbon fiber. For now, I'm just starting with the 25 and then the 10 micron filter bag in, the, uh, in that canister filter in the back. This coolant, you can go down to one micron. I might end up doing that. We'll see how much uh, that restricts the flow and that kind of thing. But we'll try this for now, see how it works. Let's turn it on and see if it leaks.
There it goes. Oh, we actually do have a little pressure. Uh, no leaks, looks like it's good. Getting about five pounds, five PSI on the output. That's what we're getting out of the stock pump anyway. So what this pressure gauge will do for you is if it drops the pressure below a certain threshold, uh, which is yet to be determined, in this case it's probably closer to zero, um, then that will tell you that your filter is getting clogged and needs to be changed out. So it's nice to have an indicator without just having to look at how the coolant is flowing. And it looks like it's about the same amount of pressure as from originally. I don't think it's really slowing it down much, if at all. So that's good. I think we can call that a success. So that's it for this video. On the next one, we're gonna see how this holds up to machining some carbon fiber. Hopefully it doesn't just clog immediately. And now that this is out of the way, we'll move on. I'll see you on the next video.